have I got a shop hack for you. Have you ever done fabricated exhaust where you're using new bins and, and flaring it and making your own exhaust on a custom project they don't make an exhaust kit for? Uh, you always run into, man, I wish I could flare these uh, or expand them so that you can slip the pipes together uh, instead of uh, trying to butt weld all of them. Obviously, in the middle of a joint, you're going to be stuck butt welding. But uh, if you have a, just the tiniest a bit of discrepancy, you, there's so much fit up and stuff. Uh, that you have to do to make that right so that the welds look good um, and then you're always disappointed or at least I have been they never look quite as good as you want so you always end up grinding them down and re-tig welding them uh, so that they look nice if you're building something that, that uh, people are going to criticize um, so I, I wanted to flange this stuff so I came up with a way we you've probably bought one of these if you've ever done this before and then chucked it across your shop and cursed at it or maybe even took it back because uh, they don't really work. Uh, they, they, they strip out, they gall up, they, you may be able to get a couple pipes in. You have to hold the pipe way too hard because you have to turn that so hard uh, that it, it's just twisting and then if you need an impact gun it just ruins it right away. Um, or at least that's what happened to me. Um, so you never actually successfully get a flange uh, and then when you do they don't look very good. Um, they, they tend to be really squared off and uh, uh, it, it's just not the best flange in the world uh, and it ends up being a total hassle and you're just like it's easier just to butt weld them uh, so you end up doing it that way so i modified one uh, one of the problems with it is you have to put this die all the way in the tube uh, for it for it to work otherwise it just makes a bell because it'll expand on one side not the other uh, so you have to put it all the way in and then you're expanding so much tubing uh, that it makes it even harder uh, and so that was my first thought on that was just i'm like well heck i'll just cut it off uh, and then reflare it and put the groove in um, back in for the rubber band to hold them so that it's easier to put in and out. The rubber band doesn't need to be there while you're using it, it's just there uh, while you're not. Um, and it worked, and, and it worked a lot better, uh, but it still wasn't as easy as I was hoping. So I one upped it. This is a hydraulic punch driver tool from Harbor Freight. It has normally it's a it's a die so this this die would be on there this is the female die and then the male die would draw into it uh, that stud pulls in as you as you increase the hydraulics uh, so I put I cut this thing beveled them on both sides so that it would make a rounder uh, inside part uh, otherwise it's real square because they cut these square from the factory um, so I cut them down to two inches uh, and did all that it, it limits the size of pipe range that you can do uh, because you, you don't have as much motion where your dies can be but it works uh, I had to increase the hole diameter on here with a die grinder to three quarter of an inch uh, and then I'm just using the male die uh, as the nut on it uh, and that works that's actually how I did that flange right there it works really good it's super easy uh, really easy it's way too easy to go too far um, but the flanges don't look quite as nice as I was hoping so I one-upped it and I one-upped it but this this involves buying a more expensive tool but what this is here this is a Lyle expansion kit uh, and the Lyle expansion kit works uh, it still sucks though uh, as far as just uh, doing doing it a lot uh, it's great if you just you just every once in a while have to flange uh, it'll work so this one it is meant for impact it has a bearing on it to take the friction at least out of the, t the head side uh, then it has a die and then you would put the overlay for the right diameter tubing you have uh, or that you're trying to expand uh, and there's actually two of these so if you're doing really big stuff, you'd be using this guy and then the appropriate die for it. Uh, we're using two, we're doing two and a half. So we're doing this guy. And then it has the wedge thing. And it works just like the Harbor Freight one uh, as far as that goes. So then, then as you tighten that bolt, it pulls and it expands. That's how, that's how that one works. Uh, but what's cool about the Lyle one, omit this thing. So you just need your insert and your aluminum part. It works on this press. So put, put the female die, I put it in the hollow end down. It works on this thing without modifying it at all. This is the stud that comes with the knockout punch kit. 
the knockout punch, the Harbor Freight knockout punch. Uh, and then the Lyle die is the same thread. There you go. Now, normally you'd be doing this in a vise, and I'm doing it the hard way. I'm doing this on a Rubbermaid table, so, and I'm right in the middle of the table, so you, and the table's not breaking, so. I didn't have my nut all the way tight to the stop valve. So this one works really good. Uh, you're flanging a little bit more than my modified Harbor Freight one. It's extremely awkward trying to hold this up and do this. Now you have fit up wiggle room. You don't have to have your cuts exactly right. You can slip them around, twist them, uh, and they work. Really, really cool. It looks pretty good. Uh, you do have the, the little stretch dies from the rubber bands. You can see the stretching in it. Uh, super clean though, uh, for, for something that you can just make so easily. Um, that's not modifying either the knockout punch or the Lyle kit. Both of them are the way you don't have to modify them. They just, it just adds together. Um, so recap, that's the inner die or the outer die just turned upside down. Uh, and it's just basically a spacer. Uh, and then you have your steel, your aluminum part, and then uh, your, your nut. And the nut fits on the, the factory threads. Works really good. This one works really good too. It's just not as clean. Uh, when you do it. Uh, this one is actually easier to pump than the Lyle one, believe it or not. Uh, it, ac it actually takes less pressure uh, to do that one. So really, really cool shot pack. Uh, now with this Lyle kit, uh, and this, I, I don't know what the part number is. I'm not, oh, it's a, it's a Lyle 17350 pipe stretcher. Um, that Lyle kit works with an impact gun and it'll work a few times before it strips out. It comes with some grease and stuff that you're supposed to keep on the bearing and, the, and probably on the threads as well uh, so that it, it, it does easier. This probably would have went a little easier had I oiled that insert, the, the wedge die. Uh, I didn't oil that uh, and it would have been easier had I, had I done that. I wouldn't have taken such as much pressure, but again, I'm on a Rubbermaid table right in the middle of it. So that's, I wasn't pushing like hard, hard on it. Uh, otherwise my table would have broken out. Um, most of my stress was holding that thing up so that you could see. Um, works really cool. My favorite shot pack I've come up with this year so far. Um, I, I like it a lot and it's definitely uh, going to get used a lot. Uh, I did the exhaust on the Safari Wagon already. Uh, Safari Wagon update video will be coming soon. I haven't been filming it uh, for a number of reasons. One, I'm not getting any views on them. Uh, so I feel really, really pointless even doing them. Uh, and I know that after the car's done, and maybe it'll get some traction, people come back and watch the videos. Uh, but everything I've been doing is just little knick-knack stuff. Um, and and I just, it just doesn't seem practical. To videotape, it takes four times longer to do the project or even longer. Um, so update video coming up on it. I got a ton done. It is almost ready to start. Uh, so we're, we're getting real close on it uh, to doing shakedown runs and stuff. And then we'll start doing cool projects that will videotape again. Uh, but I'm just tying up loose ends and stuff on it. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, it is cold in here. I turned off my furnace because it's like springtime. Uh, <laughs> but I, I kind of regret it. Um, so anyway, uh, Safari video coming out next. 
uh, th that's going to be an update video on, I got a ton done on it and it's going to go over everything I got done. Uh, I'm not going to be video videoing that car in as much detail as I have been. Uh, I don't have the viewers on it. I think that project's dragging out too long. It takes a ton of time to video it. Uh, and I'm not really getting, uh, people watching it or, or wanting to watch it. Uh, I only got a hundred views in the last video, uh, in two weeks. Uh, and then my view duration on it was like two minutes. Uh, which is really bad. It actually messes my channel up more than it helps it. So I'm not going to be doing those for a little while on that thing. Uh, I'm hoping this is a, this, this one, you know, every, every video you put out, you always hope kind of like hits that niche thing where a lot of people share it. Uh, and then it, it kind of grows everything. Uh, and so you're, you're always kind of hoping for that. Uh, and that's where, you know, you hope I have a really cool tool that I just made. Uh, that I don't think anyone else has. Uh, so I'm, you always hope that this type, this is the one. This is the one that's going to get it spread and then they'll see the safari and then watch the safari or, or whatever uh, the case may be. So uh, anyway, so so that video is coming out. That's kind of how that car is going to be going. Big crossover projects and stuff will get filled with detail. The rest of it's just going to be like, I'm going to try to do like a weekly update on it. Uh, weekly update on where I'm at uh, on it. And then I'll just kind of show you it that way. Um, we also got annihilated in that D Boss car show. I won't even get into that, but that was uh, a kind of a kick in the balls for me. Uh, I didn't want to let it. I really didn't care if we won or lose, but I, I, I and I, I still don't. Uh, but I was kind of expecting to be at least in the middle of the pack, not all the way at the bottom. I mean, I'm like, you know, if there was a losers bracket for the losers, I probably would have lost. I mean, that's how bad it was. Uh, so anyway, uh, so we got we got a little little side project rig, and, and this is kind of the videos that do really well for me are the little side project ones. Um, so we got a little geo tracker. Uh, this is going to be a legitimate four by four build that's budget built real numbers not like i went out and stole a tracker from some old lady for a hundred dollars or something uh this this, this is uh at which if you're going to find one of these for really really cheap it's or four by four for really cheap it will be a tracker but we're going to assume everyone's just buying it you know going on craigslist looking what they cost and buying one uh that that's what we're going to assume uh these cost for but this if you are going to find one these these are something you can still find for kind of cheap um not like you know, Samurai, you used to be able to do that with Samurai. It's been a long time since so you can find a cheap Samurai. Uh, or Toyota pickups, good luck. Uh, you know, that type of stuff. Those are all all taken. But uh, these trackers are amazingly good for, for, for what you can do. And then they're really cheap. The parts are cheap. The uh, Their capability is really good. Their capability of making you smile is insane. Uh, they, they are so much fun. They're tiny. They're smaller than most UTVs. Uh, so... Uh, they're a blast. So, um, and then we got another video, uh, and, and this is like kind of the extreme opposite of, of the tracker. Uh, this this is introducing our Aquila shop truck because everyone needs a shop truck, and I have two, and she only has one. Um, so, uh, she got a shop truck. It's a Ram TRX. Uh, that's Ram's response to the Ford Raptor. Uh, it is such a response to the Ford Raptor that Ford is now having to up their game to keep up with it. So it's a really good thing, even if you like the Raptor uh, and you think the, Rev the, the Ram is stupid, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, you, everyone's entitled to their opinions, but uh, you should still be happy that they made it because now, Ra now Ford's threatening to put a supercharged Coyote in the, in the Raptor. So uh, it's kind of a positive, even, even, if, you, even if you don't like it. Uh, but, but it is an amazing truck. It is a Hellcat powered Ford Raptor, uh, basically. Um, it, the suspension specs are eerily the same, uh, like to the, I mean, God, you're like into the tenths of an inches before you get different. Uh, it's sadly the same. Anyway, super duper cool truck. We ordered it a couple months ago. We picked it up on Earth Day of all things. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it has a one emissions rating, but uh, you know, and it also says we're going to spend $12,800 more on fuel in five years, but you know, whatever. Earth Day, yay. So uh, anyway, Funny stuff. But anyway, stay tuned. We got those videos coming out. Uh, really cool stuff. So uh, if I come up with any more cool shop tools, I'll let you know. Uh, but man, I don't know how I'm going to top this one. That one was uh, pretty damn good.